welcome you to Expo Say Today. I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyemi. Don't forget that our axiom is what we need is not more medication, but more education. And that's why we're bringing you information for your health transformation. The best prescription is knowledge. And as we continue our conversation on cardiovascular diseases in general and hypertension in particular, I want to start off today from where we left off last week. Last week, we mentioned the fact that there are different figures in your BP, the upper figure and the lower figure. The upper figure is called the systolic pressure and the lower figure is called the diastolic pressure. Example, 120 over 80, 110 over 70, 115 over 75. This is how blood pressure is measured. And we concluded by saying that the systolic to diastolic ratio should ideally be ratio three to two. Now, today what we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at at least three different things. Number one, we want to look at how to interpret your blood pressure numbers. For example, when only the systolic is elevated and the diastolic is normal or when only the diastolic is elevated and the systolic is stable, or when both systolic and diastolic pressures go up. How do you interpret it to locate the source of that elevation? That's one part we'll be looking at today. The second one we'll be looking at today is to look at certain complications that can develop in a person who is hypertensive, who does not appropriately address the hypertension. Hypertension has been tagged the silent killer. And the reason it is called by that name is because sometimes people are not aware that they are hypertensive because they have never gone for medical checkup. And sometimes hypertension will be in place and does not give any symptom, any sign whatsoever so the individual who is hypertensive may not even realize that he or she is hypertensive. That person carries on as if everything is okay until one day something will snap, something will break, and then that person knows for the first time that he or she is hypertensive. We're going to look at the different complications that can develop if you're hypertensive and you don't deal with it, you don't address it appropriately. And don't be scared, don't be afraid, because I have always emphasized, and we're going to get there in this series, I have always emphasized that these things are both preventable, preventable and reversible. And so if they can be prevented, those of us who are not hypertensive will be share with you diet, lifestyle, and other issues that can help you to prevent it so you don't develop it. And those who are already hypertensive, there is hope. You can reverse it. Contrary to popular medical opinion, that once you are hypertensive, you are hypertensive for life. I have a different view, and many other scientists and experts have a completely different view. Hypertension, it doesn't matter the type, is preventable and reversible. In the last episode, I shared with you about eight different types of hypertension. No matter the type of hypertension, whether it's primary or secondary or isolated systolic, or white coat, or malignant, or resistant, or orthostatic, prospandria, whatever. All of them can be addressed adequately through faith and food. Hallelujah. So that is why I don't want you to panic. I don't want you to be afraid. That's why we're here on Expose to inform you so that your health can be transformed, so that your blood pressure can be transformed. So that's the second thing we'll be looking at. When I begin to address the various complications, it is not to scare you, it is to alert you so that you will arise and do the needful. You will do the right thing that you're supposed to do in order to prevent if you don't have it or to reverse if you already have it. And then thirdly, today, if time permits, we will be looking at the different approaches that conventional medical science goes about addressing hypertension, and other cardiovascular problems. I'm going to be sharing 10 modalities with you 
10 tools that medical science utilizes in addressing all these things that we've been talking about. After I am done, hopefully in the next episode, we're going to be talking about natural strategies, natural approaches, DIY approaches. DIY, for those who don't know what it means, means do it yourself. I'm going to be sharing with you some do it yourself protocols. Eight different strategies that all of us can deploy either to prevent hypertension or to reverse hypertension. The journey is exciting. I'd like you to stay with me. This is a good point to take a break. And when I'm back, we will start the discussion. I believe you've been having a terrific time with me on Expose with Tony Akinyemi. We have great resources that will bless your life available to you on healthy living and many other life subjects. We have various platforms where you can obtain materials for your blessing. You can obtain some of our work, our books, particularly on Amazon.com. How to Regain and Retain Your Health is a book title that I highly recommend. It's available in digital format, Kindle edition, as well as in printed version. We also have juices and smoothies for healing, health, and pleasure. You can also find these items at another website, familabooks.com, F-A-M-I-L-A-Books.com. And for those of you who are in Nigeria, you can reach us at the Shepherd Store, 18 Shogunle Street, off Mobilaji Bank Anthony Way, behind HFS Place, to get our materials. We have over 600 recorded audio CDs, DVDs, VCDs, and MP3 on various subjects. All these things that I teach on Expose are already available in their complete format. How to reverse hypertension naturally, how to reverse diabetes naturally, how to reverse arthritis naturally, and many other wonderful titles. I encourage you to visit this website, Amazon.com, FamilaBooks.com, or CSS Bookstores in Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria, and you will be blessed reading those materials and sharing them with your friends and family. Thank you once again. God bless you. Welcome back. This is Expose, and I am your regular host, Tony Akinyemi. Now, the first thing we'll be looking at today is how to make sense of your blood pressure reading. Normally, your blood pressure is taken or read or measured using a device that is called a speak for short. It is wrapped, it has a cuff that is wrapped around your arm and then if it is manual, the professional, you know, inflates and then deflates and then they take the reading and they also check your pulse. And if it is digital, you can do it yourself. You simply press a button, it will automatically inflate and then deflate and it will show you the reading on an LCD or LED screen so you know your systolic pressure over your diastolic pressure and some of them will also show you your resting pulse or your pulse at the time you took that particular reading. Now it is worth your investment to own a speak or a blood pressure machine at home. It's one of those things you should have in your first aid box uh, so that periodically all the adults in the house can check their BP from time to time. That's very, very important. So when you invest in the blood pressure machine, it's a good investment in your family's wellness. Now, there are three scenarios that your blood pressure reading can take. First reading could be, or maybe I should say four, three of them abnormal, one of them normal. The normal one is when both your systolic and your diastolic pressures are within the normal range. In other words, the upper figure of your BP reading, the systolic pressure, is not higher than 140 and it is not lower than 90. That range is considered normal by most experts. And then the lower figure of your BP, the diastolic pressure, is not lower than 65 and it is not higher than 90. So if your uh, systolic pressure 
over diastolic pressure is not above 140 over 90. That used to be the borderline, the boundary. But about two years ago, all over the world, uh, the numbers was uh, the numbers were uh, again reduced to 130 over 80. But I believe that for those particularly who are advanced in years, if your BP can be kept below 140 over 90, then you are good. That is the normal tension, normal range. Now, for the abnormal ones, that can assume three scenarios. First scenario is when only the upper figure is elevated above 140, but the lower figure is within normal range. It is stable. It is not above 90. For example, if somebody's blood pressure is 160 over 85, the 160, the upper figure, is above 140. That is elevated. But the 85 is below 90. That is stable. That is normal. So that is called isolated systolic hypertension. Only the upper figure is elevated, the lower figure is normal. That is first scenario. What does that mean when that happens? What it means is that when your upper figure, upper number, is the one that is climbing, but the lower number is stable or normal, what that means is that the cause of your hypertension is likely to be psycho-emotional. It could be arising from mental issues. When I say mental, I don't necessarily mean psychiatric issues. Sometimes psychiatric issues like uh, insanity and such other things that people consider extreme and they stigmatize those who have such conditions make people to think about all psychiatric issues as if they are terrible issues. Anxiety can be regarded as a psychiatric issue as well. Depression is also a psychiatric issue. But those ones are not <laughs> insanity. So when you hear psychiatry, it does not mean insanity all the time. Okay? So there are some problems, challenges, issues that people face in life that affect their psyche, affect their mind, affect their emotions. Uh, they, they border on mental health, mental health. And all those issues arising from mental health related issues, psychological issues, emotional issues, those ones are usually the factors that drive the upper figure of your BP. Now I'm going to identify a number of them. For example, if you are stressed, that can drive up your systolic pressure. If you are sleep deprived, maybe you have been working hard, working hard, you have deadlines to meet, you have reports to submit, you have uh, proposals to submit, and because of that you've been having only two to three hours of sleep every day, and you are always up and running, that can drive up your systolic pressure. Okay, sleep deprivation, stress. Then when you have anxiety, negative emotions, and toxic emotions, you worry a lot, you think about all your problems and all your issues, you're thinking about your marriage, you're thinking about your career, you're thinking about your business, you're thinking about your children, you're thinking about your parents that are sick, and so on and so forth. All those thinking, when you think too much, that can drive up your systolic pressure. So that's why we say the systolic pressure is usually controlled or modulated by our psycho-emotional health. So when you have psychological challenges, emotional challenges, relationship challenges, marital problems, financial problems, your business is not doing well, your ministry is not doing well, your marriage is not working, your children are delinquent, and all of those worries and concerns can drive up your systolic pressure. So if a person has elevated systolic blood pressure and you are giving that person drugs to address it, you are not really addressing the root of the problem, it will never subside except you sit the person down and have a very meaningful counseling session with that person to help to douse all the doubts and all the fears, the anxieties, the worries, the phobias, the concerns of that person. You don't just sweep those things under the carpet. You confront them headlong, you deal with them, you offer hope and encouragement and support, and that person's BP will begin to normalize. Okay? That is when the systolic pressure, the upper figure, is the only one rising and the lower figure is stable. That is arising from psycho-emotional challenges. Hopefully, as we go on, 
we're going to be addressing those psycho-emotional challenges one by one. I, I will be bringing experts to come and shed light more on some of these issues, such as anxiety, such as uh, uh, depression, such as uh, worry, fear, phobias, uh, and even addictions and things like that. All are different things connected to mental health issues. And these things can affect our blood pressure at the end of the day. So if you have challenges in any of those areas I have mentioned, you need to address them. If you can't sleep, you are suffering from insomnia, you have to address the sleep problem because that could be the root cause of your elevated blood pressure. If you continue to take medication to, to crash the BP and yet you are not sleeping well, it's a matter of 24 hours. So once the effect of the drug wears off, the BP goes up again because you are still not sleeping well. You are not managing your stress well. You are not dealing with your relationships well. You are not dealing with your concerns very well. All these things must be taken together holistically. That is how to reverse hypertension, particularly when it is psycho-emotionally driven. Now, it is not about swallowing pills. It's not about taking supplements. It's not about anything. If you are taking pills and taking supplements, those ones are just to address those symptoms, but they are not addressing the root cause of your elevated systolic pressure. I hope I've made myself very clear on that first scenario. First scenario is when only the upper number of your BP is elevated and the lower number is normal. Second scenario is when only the lower number, the diastolic pressure, is elevated but the systolic pressure is normal. What that means is that um, you, you have something going on within your body that needs to be addressed. Basically, from my own personal experience in uh, handling cases like this, I have found out that most people that have their diastolic pressure, the lower number, elevated un unusually, they have a lot of toxicity in their system. Their body is so toxic, their liver is toxic, and they need to do some liver cleanse, some gallbladder cleanse, they need to do some colonic cleanse, colon cleansing, they need to do some kidney cleansing, they need to do some lymphatic drainage, and they need to do some emotional detoxification. Now, detoxification is a very, very powerful tool in throwing out toxins from the system and balancing the terrain, balancing the environment, purifying, cleansing the internal environment of the body. Again, our focus today is not on detoxification, but I just want you to note that because sometimes in the future, on another episode, we are going to be discussing detoxification extensively. So you will understand how to detoxify your kidneys, how to detoxify your liver, how to do colonic irrigation, coffee enemas, how to, you know, remove waste products from your system in a manner that will get your internal environment very clean. Now, when we begin to share the strategies for preventing hypertension and reversing hypertension, you will understand that detoxification is one of the eight strategies that we're going to be talking about. Now, the third scenario of your blood pressure is when both your systolic pressure and your diastolic pressure are elevated. In other words, the upper number as well as the lower number are both elevated. That one is a serious issue. Okay? In other words, you have a combination of factors that is multifactorial. You have more than one or probably more than two factors causing the BP to go up. In that case, you have to examine your entire system holistically from head to toe to address every single thing that needs to be addressed. Detoxification will be involved, uh, stress management will be involved, nutritional balancing will be involved, sleep therapy may be involved, and so on and so forth. When both the systolic and the diastolic are all elevated, then you need to address it. It could be as a result of the compromises in the integrity of your blood, compromises in the integrity of your blood vessels. Maybe there are plaque deposits, arteriosclerosis, and many, many other things affecting both the heart and the blood vessels. All of those can drive up those two numbers. Of course, the eight strategies that I have developed 
to address hypertension incorporate all of these aspects together. And that's why it is almost a fail-proof strategy. 90% or more of those who adopt the eight prong strategy that I have developed actually get good outcomes. They are able to normalize both their systolic and diastolic pressures within weeks or months at most. Uh, quite a number are able to go off their medications over time. They don't go off it abruptly. They do it gradually while they are being monitored to be sure that everything is all right. And even after they have been successfully weaned off their medications, they still keep an eye on their BP by checking it periodically to be sure that everything is still in order. So those are the three different scenarios that a person's blood pressure can assume. Only the systolic, systolic may be elevated while the diastolic is stable. Only the diastolic may be elevated while the systolic is stable. Or both systolic and diastolic are elevated. And when those three scenarios occur, at least you are able to make sense of them. You are able to decode. You are able to interpret the source of those elevations. That's exactly the first part of today's discourse. Now, the second part of today's conversation on hypertension is to look at different complications that can arise. If a person is hypertensive and that person does not do something to address that hypertension, to correct it, to normalize it, if that person doesn't take care of himself or herself and just allows things to go on like that, elevated blood pressure, high blood pressure or hypertension can start damaging so many things in the body from head to toe. And I want to share a few of those complications that may arise if you don't address your elevated blood pressure. The first one is that statistics reveal that 75% of strokes and heart attacks happen among those who have hypertension. 75% of strokes and heart attack, they are as a result of elevated blood pressure or high blood pressure. So if you have hypertension, don't joke with it, please. Don't joke with it. Arise now and do something. Thankfully, there is DIY. Do it yourself. Things that you can do for yourself to bring your BP into normalcy, to regularize and normalize everything. There are things you can do which I will be sharing with you subsequently in subsequent episodes. But I just want you to know the statistic that 75%, three out of four people that suffer from stroke and heart attacks have underlying condition, hypertension as an underlying condition. Number two, unaddressed hypertension can lead to kidney impairment or kidney damage. Kidney damage. Because elevated blood pressure begins to damage the kidneys until people begin to go on dialysis. They begin to have their urea levels elevated, their creatinine levels elevated, and their PCV, their blood level, begins to go down. So it is a vicious cycle. High blood pressure damages the kidneys. And once the kidneys are impaired, it further drives up the blood pressure even higher. And then your blood volume, because your kidneys are involved in regulating the production of red blood cells in your body. So once the kidneys are impaired, as well as the glands on top of the kidney, the adrenal glands and so on, then you are no longer able to produce enough blood and that begins to make your blood volume to go down, your packed cell volume, PCV your blood volume begins to go down. So you have low blood level, you begin to look pale, God forbid, and then BP goes up, PCV goes down, and then the waste products in your blood that your kidneys are supposed to be filtering out, your creatinine levels, your urea levels, those ones begin to go up because they are not being filtered out, so they accumulate. It's like a lot of waste, a lot of refuse dump inside the blood. So you see the person bloating, swelling up, the feet will swell, the, the face becomes puffy. Why is that happening? Because the body is beginning to retain a lot of water to dilute this concentrated poison that your kidneys are not filtering out and you are not urinating them out of your body. As they accumulate in the body, the body will retain water to dilute it so that it's not toxic to kill. That's why there's edema, there's puffiness in the face, there is swelling and what have you. So kidney impairment or kidney damage is a complication that can arise if somebody has hypertension and he does not address 
that hypertension. Number three complication that can arise is cardiomegaly or enlargement of heart. You know I explained in one of the previous episodes, cardio means heart, mega means big. So cardiomegaly means big heart or enlarged heart. If a person has hypertension and the person does not address it correctly, appropriately and timely, it can make the heart to begin to get bigger and lead to cardiomegaly. And once the heart gets enlarged, the person begins to feel tired, weak, because that compromises your entire circulatory system. The person may not be able to climb stairs easily. The person will be panting and breathless. Then if it gets really serious, the person can begin to cough very profusely and begin to vomit and all kinds of complications arising from the enlargement of heart. So don't let that happen. Number four thing that can happen from unaddressed hypertension is palpitations. You know, uh, people begin to hear the beating of their own heart. <laughs> their heart is beating and they're hearing it. You are not supposed to be hearing your own heart beat, except you are using a device to listen to it. But normally, as I am seated now, my heart is beating. I am, my ears are not supposed to be hearing the beating of my heart. But when people have hypertension, and they don't address it. Of course, hypertension is not the only thing that causes palpitations. Worry, anxiety, fear, phobia, and all of those things can cause them. But hypertension also can make the heart to palpitate, to beat pack, 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 just like that. And the sound is so loud that you can hear it in your own ears. Okay? That is another complication that can arise from hypertension if you don't deal with it. Number five, if you don't address hypertension, it can also lead to damage to the eyes. We have what we call hypertensive retinopathy, where the elevated blood pressure begins to damage the retina of the eyes. So vision impairment can also happen as a result of unaddressed hypertension. See, there are so many problems that unaddressed hypertension can cause. But once you address it, you can prevent all those complications. Sometimes people wait until the complications have happened before they start addressing the hypertension. By the time the hypertension is now normalized or they are corrected, the damage that it has caused lingers and they live with that damage for a long time to come. If they are fortunate, they may be able to also reverse the damages that it has caused. But don't wait for hypertension to cause those damages in your body before you begin to wake up to address them. So eye damage or hypertensive retinopathy, that is number five complication. Number six complication is that unaddressed hypertension can also begin to affect the brain. It can lead to dementia, okay, dementia. And dementia is a group of different neurological problems or neurodegenerative conditions, such as Alzheimer's disease, for example, okay, memory loss, and all of those things. So if hypertension is not addressed, it can also affect the brain after a long period of time. Then number seven, hypertension can also lead to uh, sexual dysfunction, sexual dysfunction in men in particular, where they have loss of libido and um, they cannot gain erection anymore, erectile dysfunction, uh, and it damages uh, somewhere down below there. Okay, but there's a raging debate out there to ask whether it is hypertension that is actually causing that damage or sometimes the medications being used to treat hypertension that are causing that damage. Well, the jury is out there. Uh, I personally believe that both can contribute. Hypertension itself can contribute to sexual dysfunction in men in particular and the medications, pharmaceutical drugs that are used to address hypertension can also affect sexual health at the end of the day. They can cause low libido or loss of libido. They can lead to erectile dysfunction because sometimes the drugs themselves have their own side effects. Okay? Another problem, complication that can arise from unaddressed hypertension is sudden death. The person looks healthy, he's going out there, he's functioning, you think nothing is wrong, and then suddenly the next thing you hear is he's dead, he has dropped dead. <laughs> okay? That's sudden death. And that can happen as a result of cardiac arrest, or a heart attack, or a massive stroke. Anything can go wrong. And multiple organ 
you know, system failure can happen and the person just dropped dead suddenly. Looking apparently healthy, but people not realizing that that person was a walking corpse because he had that underlying condition that he did not address. That's why they call it the, the silent killer, hypertension, the silent killer. The person is walking, the person is talking, the person is functioning, and then suddenly, whoa, abruptly like that, sudden death, the person is gone. God forbid. I pray for you that the Lord will give you the wisdom as well as the grace and the discipline to take the necessary steps both to prevent cardiovascular problems and particularly hypertension if you don't have it and for those who have already been diagnosed with it that you will take the necessary steps and measures to reverse it. I'll be coming to that in subsequent episodes. But let me sign off on this note by saying to you that if all you are doing to address your hypertension is to swallow pills, then you are not doing enough. If all you are doing to address your hypertension is to swallow tablets, medicines, capsules, then you are not doing enough. You need to do much more than that in order to get the desired outcome of a total reversal of your hypertension. My prayer for you is that God will grant you and me long life, peace of mind, joy in our lives, in our homes, in our marriages, in our businesses, in our finances, in our career, so that we will not be living under tension, but we will have normal tension all the days of our lives. May the peace of God that passes understanding possess your soul. May God's grace be abundant towards you. Now, the other day I was discussing with my daughter, and I said, the world is looking for peace. Even the United Nations is striving and working towards world peace. And yet, they have rejected the Prince of Peace. How can you have peace when you reject the Prince of Peace? You can set up inter-religious committees, you can set up expert panels, you can do researches and studies to find how to, uh, to look for how to get lasting peace in the world. Peace will elude those who reject the Prince of Peace. The Bible says there is no peace to the wicked until a man repents and makes Jesus Christ the Prince of Peace, the Lord of his life. That person does not know peace. This is the way I put it. No Jesus, no peace. And no Jesus, no peace. What that means is K-N-O-W Jesus, K-N-O-W peace. And N-O Jesus, N-O peace. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. Shalom. God bless you. Have a very wonderful evening today. I love you. Thank you for being with us on Expose. Don't forget, what we need is not more medication, but more education. And the best prescription is knowledge. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the notification button so that you can be reminded anytime we come live. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram because this is being simultaneously uh, streamed on all those platforms. I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyemi. Bye-bye. My name is Olani Keyaladeshuyi, a graduate of Rafa Institute of Healthy Living, a school run by Reverend Tony Akiyemi, where we are taught how to take care of our health using basic healthy living principles. My coming into contact with the school has changed my life for the better. Prior to that time, I had been diagnosed of arthritis. I had pains all over me. I had difficulty in breathing. But since I decided to take the principles taught in the school seriously, and I followed them, I discovered that my health has improved. I am free of pain. My breathing has stabilized to such an extent that I can run a gym. Can you beat that? So. I want to invite you, come, join us at Rafa Institute of Healthy Living. Let's learn together how to reverse supposedly irreversible diseases using nutrition and lifestyle. All are basic principles. Your life will not remain the same again.